What made you want to quit? What made you want to stay? <laughs> um, mine was different. My mine is um, well. Okay, so there's there's a couple things. Like you 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 start to feel that slip a little bit. And mine, the major question always was, uh, can I still catch lightning in a bottle and make the tail end of a slam. You know, I, I felt that way until the, the day I retired that I could, and I made the second week in my last slam, right? I knew I could still play. I won two out of my last five events, but that is very different than saying at that time, you know, and, and everyone's getting better. I'm getting a little worse. Can I go through Roger, Rafa, Novak, Murray, you know, Del Potro, uh, yada, yada, yada. And once I lost the belief that I could, tennis felt like work for, for the first time. Um, and I'm not saying like work, you know, I'm not comparing it to what anyone else does. I'm saying like, it felt like a bit of a slog in practice to where maybe I was playing, you know, I remember winning Atlanta in 2012. Um, and I felt relief, um, and also knew that it would do absolutely zero. Uh, no one will ever remember because it did zero. It was a 250. I'd won, you know, that was the 32nd time that I won. It made no difference um, in, in kind of the the grand scheme of things and the way that that you're remembered. And that's like a really, for me, it was a really weird place to be, right? If the upside's not there and the downside is like, nah, yeah, okay, we expect that. Like you won Eastbourne last month, big deal. That's another 250. Like it, it's a weird place to be where you can't even really celebrate your victories, even though like that was a good week. Like I, I, I really wanted to, um, I, where the, the, the match and everyone has kind of that match or maybe sequence of matches where it's like, I, I kind of knew, I remember walking off the court, um, uh, going into the Olympics in 2012, it was on grass. Um, mm -hmm. I had played Eleven, well. Yeah. Yeah, I had played well at Eastbourne, kind of turned my year around. I was a dumpster fire, couldn't win matches. Then one Eastbourne out of nowhere, played pretty well at Wimbledon, lost a tough four setter to Ferrer, who uh, underrated on grass because he can move and keep the ball down, but played fine. Um, then won Atlanta uh, right away. So at that point, I'd won two of my last three events, not seeded because I had been hurt, ranking had dropped. And all of a sudden, there's a second round matchup with, with Novak. Uh, on center court at Wimbledon and everyone kind of circles that matchup and says, you know what, Andy's not as good as he was, but like on grass, you know, is he still, you know, one of the top six or seven guys in the world on grass? I'd like to think that I was, um, but if I'm not top six or seven, maybe it's 10. Um, and, and, and Novak at that point hadn't, he had won Wimbledon, but it wasn't as if he had the stranglehold on the tournament like he did for the decade after that. And I remember thinking, I, I walked off the court and I'll tell you the scoreline after I tell you the story. I hit the ball pretty well. Actually, I hit the ball really well. I'm like, I'm going to go into practice tomorrow with confidence. Like, it's going to come off, and I know I'm going to play fine. I returned okay, pretty well. Didn't make as many first serves as I would have wanted, but, like, I lost one and two. And I walked into the locker room after that, and I said, I think this is just all different gravy. I think what I'm putting out versus what is being received and what I'm feeling is just totally different. And so I walked off that court, and I was kind of like, Oh, I, um, I don't know that I, I don't know that I have a slam final in me. And at that point, if you get to a slam final, maybe nervous take over and you can like something and maybe you break through. And I, I was still kind of holding out hope. So for me, that reality had kind of set in. Um, I didn't go into the U S open in 2012, uh, planning to re retire that tournament. I won my first match, uh, against, a, it was either wild card or a qualifier, um, from the States. And, um, I woke up the next morning, my shoulder was hurting. Like when I brushed my teeth, I could feel like, you know, tendonitis or some sort of tear or whatever. And it just hurt. I was already nervous and freaking out about my match two nights later. I think I played Monday day and then Thursday night was the schedule against Bernard Tomic, right? Where it's like, that's the guy, like if I play well, I beat him, you know, a lot. That's, that's the, I built my career on beating Bernard Tomic in, in matches 90% of the time. Um, and I was just freaking out nervous, you know, and I'm just like, what, a, what am I doing? So I wake up that morning, Brooke was out running errands. I had slept in. Um, so I text her and I said, you know, can you, can you come home? Um, I'm thinking like weird things, um, about, you know, and she's like, are you okay? I'm like, everything's fine. Like there's no emergency. I'm just like in my own head about, about tennis. And she comes back. She's like, what's going on? I go, I think I'm going to retire. And she goes, oh, well, okay. Like that's not shocking to, to us, but you know, okay, what do you think? And I'm like, well, like today. And, and, she, and so she, and so she goes, whoa, 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 whoa. You're, you're prone to like being kind of irrationally emotional, uh, sometimes. 
Um, and so we kind of just went through pros and cons and it was like, I want to do other things with my life. I don't know that I believe anymore. Uh, everything hurts. Um, you know, and then the, you know, the, the lot of cons and the pros were like, okay, well you still have time left on your contracts. Um, but like, which is, which is significant, but I always knew that I wanted to, to retire at the U S open. I just didn't know it would be then. And so then it was like a, you know, a string of events that day where I called, uh, Larry and Doug, who were my guys, my coach and my, my PT to my room. And they were completely blindsided. Um, you know, and they're all free. You know, I, I know there's like a million side conversations going on saying, is, is this real? What, I mean, like, how do you tell someone they're wrong? You know, when they, when they honestly think this, so it's, it's a weird thing. Mine was pretty clear cut. Um, I started texting some friends. Some of them were in New York. And I just said, if you're in New York, you know, I, I'm calling a press conference today. Um, I think it's going to be curtains. Um, and so that was it. I walked in. I decided at like 10 a.m. in the morning and walked in at like, I don't know when it was, three or four in the afternoon. Um, and that was it. And then I played out the rest of the tournament. Frankly, it was like one of the most fun weeks of of my entire career. Because it was yeah. like you got all the benefit of of playing and the Arthur Ashe of things and night sessions and like – but like I would get to practice days and I'm like, nah, doesn't really fucking matter, does it? Right. <laughs> like it's, well, it's, what, over, what, uh, it's over anyways. This is not the uh, this is not the year long retirement tour where you get no. uh, an anecdote and a trophy in a rocking chair. How, how did you feel? No. How did you feel the week out? I mean, I think you know, I, I think athletes sometimes say, okay, fine, uh, it'll be a relief. The announcement will come, but how how did you feel a week later? How did you feel a year later when players you knew you could beat were yeah. doing well for themselves? Yeah, well, I, I mean, listen, I, I hit with enough guys in Austin at that time. There were a bunch of guys training there, so I, I knew I could play. I, I, it wasn't, you know, I'd get in the offseason, we'd be hitting with someone in November, and you, you tune them up, and, like, you still know it's there. I probably needed it for for my ego. I, I, I never had a day where I, I really regretted it. I was never close to, to, to coming back. Um, the one day where I sat and I was like, you know, fucking really, was day one or day two of Wimbledon the next year, and Sergei Stukovsky beats Roger. Rafa goes down oh, that's to a bloody uh, Tuesday or whatever. Uh, it was. Yeah, the, exactly. Uh, right. To the beat uh, Darcy, I think, or something like that. Yeah. yeah, it was like these guys are both out in the second round, and I'm going like, really? My entire career, you guys right. couldn't take a dive, and now Roger's yeah. and to Stukovsky, who, by the way, we are thinking about you, Sergey. He is on the front lines uh, in Ukraine. One of the good guys. Um, so we are always there with you. But uh, also, you beating Roger uh, on center court at Wimbledon would <laughs> absolutely ruin my day. Right. It was a shocking uh, re result. So we hope you're well. And also, uh, that was a shocking result. Um, but so that was like the one day where I was like throwing my toys around. Um, but then it was like, I, I didn't have that like angst that most people have. And I felt like, I feel like since people have asked, you know, what's it like retiring, you know, is it so hard? And I'm like, I, I feel like I, sh like they want me to tell them how difficult it is, but it was fine for me. Like I was fine. There was enough other things. I, I had other interest in, in business and foundation and other stuff. I, the, the advice that I've given people um, when they've asked is I said, don't retire and have no idea what you're going to do the following Tuesday. <laughs> 